the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, while I sat back there and um, from our father, the bishop, and then Reverend Vindi Olua was so blessed and honored, humbled, just listening to them say different things about um, their perceptions about me is very humbling. I really want to appreciate the love and everything that I have felt and I continue to feel every time I'm here. And honestly, when Bishop was speaking, all that was in my heart was that I pray that people will be able to look at the life of this precious man of God. And now he also came with our mother. Such an honor. Such an honor. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something. One of the greatest honor that a father can give you is to honor your presence with his wife. Yes. It is, it is one of the greatest honor that any father can give. It's one thing for him to come, but when you see a man come to honor you with his wife, he has truly honored you. Praise the name of the Lord. And then, if you honor a man and dishonor his wife, your honor is not genuine. You have to honor a man and communicate the same measure of honor to the wife. So if you honor Bishop and appreciate him and you do not appreciate and celebrate our mother, then our honor is not complete. Our honor is lopsided and even insincere. It should never tire us to learn honor. You've heard my teachings on honor. Honor is a gate opener it can open any door whatsoever praise the name of the lord please i like because while standing to bless our father again the bishop and our mother let's celebrate them 51 years hallelujah amen and amen let me give you an advice and this is simply because i'm speaking to spiritual people this is out of my teaching but if i were you i will find a way before the end of this conference or somewhere especially for all of us who are trusting god for longevity in life in ministry in marriage find a seed with understanding you, you can carry a seed and go and drop it as donation and nothing happens but you look for our father the bishop or our mother and tell him sir i have simply come to connect 
whatever can keep a man and his wife for 51 years with joy 51 years cannot be a mistake hallelujah this these are some of the correct applications of the law of seed time and harvest as for me i already know what i will do between me and god and them never allow spectacular manifestations of grace pass you and you act as if you didn't see it no no most of these graces we are not the inventors of them we also receive them through honor and when you find them sincerely tap into them with understanding and you will see that they begin to speak in your life are we together now and then of course let's celebrate reverend vindiolu we had a wonderful time in unsuka before coming here such an amazing man of god Reverend Dan, thank you. Thank you. The Lord bless you. And then to honor every, every servant of God, let's bless them. Why do we bless the men of God? The Bible mandates we do so. To honor they that labor in word. Honor them that labor in doctrine. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready for this morning? Father, speak to us by your spirit. We have come to learn. We have come to receive wisdom. Help our hearts. May we contact genuine power. May we contact fire and intelligence so that we can do much for you with our lives with our ministries in jesus name i pray amen and amen please be seated god bless you ephesians chapter 6 yesterday we began discussing the subject of strength and capacity in the spirit the bible says if you turn aside in the day of adversity that your strength is small we examined a few things around strength and then Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 it says finally brethren be strong in the Lord. That's where we took our theme for our discussion. And yesterday we began to examine the advantage of spirit for his strength. Your foolishness for his wisdom. Your doubt for faith. Encounters as spiritual platforms for exchange. encounters bring conviction and faith in the life of the believer when you have an encounter you do not doubt when you have an encounter your faith becomes solid the bible says to be immovable unbendable and there are two accounts we are going to take very quickly and then we'll pray number one is the encounter of jacob in genesis chapter 32 please pay attention genesis chapter 32 let's start from verse 24 genesis 32 we're reading from verse 24 this is jacob having an encounter with the god of the bible the bible says and jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day look up please how many of you know that when you engage in an activity for that long let's say he started from 12 midnight by six o'clock all of your physical strength is already gone 
you have to understand the wrestle was not for one hour the bible says there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day do you know what was happening in that wrestling his physical strength was diminishing by the time it was morning he had no strength again and god said now that you have no strength of your own we are ready to talk next verse 25 and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of jacob's thigh was out of joint and he wrestled with him 26 and he said let me go for the day breaketh and he said i will not let you go except thou bless me you know what it means to bless to bless means to empower me to advance to empower me to prosper to empower me to increase to empower me to multiply i'm tired of this limitation i am tired of this level i will not let you go i realize that my advancement depends on my being blessed i will not let you go until you bless me next verse and he said unto him what is your name and he said jacob and he said your name shall no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince thou hast thou power with god and with men and has prevailed 30 or 29 and jacob asked him and said tell me i pray thee watch this are you seeing how powerful this is when he was done blessing jacob jacob would have said i have received power from you you can go but he said it is more than power i am looking for what is your name i need a relationship with this person who i had an encounter with he said tell me you have touched the whole of my tie you have pronounced a blessing many believers will say thank you lord now that i have received power from you have a nice day i don't need you again but jacob said i don't want to be that foolish if i need power tomorrow and i don't know you who will i call again he says tell me i pray you what is your name what is your name in other words this encounter is not just stopping with a miracle this encounter is not just stopping with an impartation i need more than an impartation i can have an encounter and get power i can have an encounter and get wisdom but lord thank you for all these things but the the real hunger of this encounter is to know your name i pray you now that i don't have any need again i've been sorted out you have spoken a blessing over me he said i pray thee tell me your name and he said wherefore is it that thou dost ask as after my name in other words do you need my name and hear what the bible says and he blessed him there <laughs> so the first blessing he gave him what was it i hope you realize he blessed jacob twice the first blessing was because he wrestled and he did not prevail the second blessing was because he asked for his name this second blessing was a revelation of his name are we together now yes and god said jacob because you are interested in a relationship with me to know me more than to have blessings i will name myself after you so he became the god of jacob by the time we get to psalms 24 the bible recommends the god of jacob as the model for encounters jacob desired to know god more than to receive things from him i have been foolish all my life i have been cheated all my life i've suffered in the house of laban now you have come to me thank god for the blessings thank god for the miracles but i pray thee do not let me go 
without telling me your name what reference will i make what I, I need conviction tell me your name and he said why are you asking for my name and he blessed him that blessing there is not to lay hands on him and say you are blessed that blessing is a revelation of his name god gave him an encounter you notice the same thing happened to moses when moses had an encounter in the burning bush do you know that most times god does not reveal himself till you ask him to god can reveal his power god can reveal several things but if you want to know him he will wait for your hunger the revelation of god is in response to a man's hunger moses said who shall i tell pharaoh had sent me he said good question i am that i am when jacob had this encounter his life turned around and you can see out of jacob came joseph who became the deliverer of israel from egypt and hunger and famine and out of them there was continuity to the program of god even until jesus arrived everybody say encounters many people are not able to last in life and ministry many people vacillate over their convictions because they lack genuine encounters an encounter leaves you with an imprint of an experience that nothing in life can erode out of your life let me give you an instance god forbid but there might be some of you here who have had encounters with arm robbers or encounters with an accident do you know even if it's after 50 years you can recall that experience with detail because of the level of impact you must have that kind of spiritual experience where after 30 years in ministry you can stand and say i know whom i believe and i am persuaded that he is able to commit that which is able to take care of that which is given to him against that day most of you seated here listen to me if you want to serve the purposes of god in truth and with integrity you will need more than a call to ministry you will need more than oil just coming on your head you will need more than a ministerial title you will need a genuine encounter with the god of the bible the first question pharaoh will ask you is who sent you who sent you and you must be able to articulate intelligently and tell pharaoh i know the one who sent me don't stand on that crusade ground without an encounter and just say the sick be healed you will be disappointed don't start ministry without a genuine encounter our fathers of faith will tell you you hear what happened to bishop when our father was talking here i was struck more than our meeting he had an encounter where the lord himself revealed to him so everything that he does today is more than just a, a desire as a father to honor his children in a land there is conviction do you know i was humbled humbled beyond imagination when we were in, at Nsuka, and i turned and the next thing i would see was our father the bishop he was sitting there i said this man at this age moving up and down he would have been able to send a word of blessing from here and would be so grateful that he opened the gate but he went and sat there because of encounters when you have an encounter problems and challenges don't drive you from the place of your call when you do not have an encounter anything can sway you away a little persecution here and there and you find out people give up on the things of god god called me to be a pastor after one year you do not have membership you are ready to pack up god called me to be this and that you see that people continue to vacillate left and right because they do not have encounters encounters leave an experience that nothing in this life is able to erode my life is full of spiritual encounters 
that have sponsored the energy the energy to do the things that i do the things that we have seen the things that we have heard the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life that is what we teach when you have an encounter with god listen carefully especially an encounter with the dimension of god he seeks for you to reveal there is nothing on earth that will ever sway your conviction and your persuasion in that area listen to me there are people who had an encounter with god as a deliverer there is nothing you are going to tell them that will change their conviction they know demons are real they know god can arise as a deliverer whether you believe in deliverance or not the impact of the encounter they had is too real for any sermon or otherwise to erode it there are others who have encountered god as the one who prospers whether you believe in prosperity or not it is a persuasion in their heart they would die believing it there are people who had visions of souls going to hell and the lord spoke to them and said to save people from going to hell it was said of baba deboe our father in the lord that even when he has a pastor's meeting when he's done he will do an altar call can you imagine that an altar call among past i'm talking of leaders so not not members once he's done he said if you are here you are my pastors but you are yet to give your life to jesus christ is that normal the people you ordain yourself and yet you cannot take that risk in case something has happened everybody say encounters can i tell you this every time you are ashamed of being bold about anything is because you have not had an encounter in that area if you are ashamed of standing for jesus and representing him your phone rings and it's a christian song you quickly off it because you're in a restaurant the reason is because you've not had an encounter you were just introduced to a church and you came to an altar to repeat a, a to recite a salvation prayer when you encounter the god of the bible you become too grateful to keep quiet it's the reason why evangelism is poor today because nobody really gingers people go and do evangelism evangelism is a product of the revelation of an encounter with the love of jesus when you actually encounter the love of jesus you become too grateful read your bible jesus begged people to keep quiet but they went and noised it abroad so if we have to coerce people if we have to beg people if we have to plead with people if we have to instruct and even threaten people tell people in enugu about jesus they do not have encounters if i stop ministry today i stop what i'm doing preaching the gospel and helping the nations experience the life and the power of jesus i probably will live a miserable life and not have anything else to do because of the impact of the encounters like our father the bishop said this is my life this is not a vocation i'm doing this is my life because it is an encounter if there is nobody to preach to if you empty the whole earth and leave only me there i will still preach when i started preaching i was talking to stones i would go at the back of the house alone and stand there and preach and sense the power of god yes sir i didn't know my mother was somewhere hiding and watching me it was later she would tell me that do you know while you were doing those things sometimes i would come and peep i mean for hours you would think a conference is happening 
I will greet the people, introduce the conference, fire. I'm preaching there. So my preaching today has nothing to do with who is there to listen or who is not there to listen. The encounter is greater than the crowd. The encounter is greater than the acceptance. The encounter is greater than the region. Listen to me. If you do not have encounters greater than the motivation of men, this is the reason why a lot of preachers get into trouble. When you say Jesus is Lord and someone says you are stupid, you say, ah, let's be careful. Let's not say it again. Go and read your Bible. After they flood the apostles and release them, if they flood you like that, won't you go back home quietly and say, look, God, you know I've tried for you. Let someone else too have those stripes. Those guys refused to keep quiet. It was too real. How could they hide Jesus? How could they hide their love for him? How could they hide the fact that he saved them? How could they hide the fact that they had an impact with him? When Paul stood before Felix and he was speaking, Paul said, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. When Paul opened fire and he was done, the man said, I almost repented. I almost you almost converted me what sort of a man are you you should be thinking of your pain and your bonds and the prison while paul was in prison he was writing letters to the churches forget about my pain i hope you are doing well i hear that there are some of you who are misbehaving correct that nonsense that i'm hearing a man is in the prison you should be thinking please tell the people i've repented i'm tired of all this nonsense most of the things you read today he wrote it in jail everybody say conviction today people cannot go to church because they don't have transport fare what is the reason why you didn't attend the conference it is raining no encounters no conviction are, are we are you following now yes. why did you leave enugu state it, I'm, I'm tired after two years i have just five members what will i be doing with five members where will the offering come from no conviction no encounters hear me an encounter provides a basis not just for you to live for something but to die for something terrorists today do you know why terrorists continue to advance because they have had an encounter with demon spirit they are too real they are more real than a gun they are more real than a bullet even though we don't believe them we respect them the reason why god cannot do much with people in a city is because they do not have the kind of encounter many people have not had an encounter with the holy ghost so when you say pray in the spirit when they turn and see other people their business partners they just turn and bend their head down in shame i don't want to fall my hand because you have not seen the advantage provided praying in the spirit remains a religious affair you will only do it in church and remain there someone will wear a t-shirt jesus is lord and when they see their friends they quickly cover it with sweater and then when they are alone they, that is a joke can i tell you this you do not take your world why should people believe something you don't believe in yourself you should be the first advocate and the first fanatic of everything you have to communicate there are pastors who don't believe in their own anointing why should your members believe in your anointing you, you believe in another man's anointing which is wonderful why should i believe in you when you do not believe in yourself hallelujah encounters do you believe in what god has made you do you believe in the giftings that he has put in your life we've celebrated our father and our mother you've celebrated reverend dan and the ministers you've celebrated joshua selman but have you been honest enough to look at yourself in the mirror and say jesus thank you look what you've done for me 
look how you've changed my life listen love people and respect people but not to the detriment of your self-worth you must have a solid encounter trying to become like another person is an abuse to what god has done in your life jesus you love me too much oh, too much oh, too much oh, excess love oh. jesus you love me too much oh too much oh too much oh excess love oh. hear me there are people today who claim they are called into the healing ministry they do not have any courage to pray for a sick body do you know why because their ego is greater than their encounter i've shared with you my story do you know how many mortuaries i've gone to in my life do you know how many dead bodies i've prayed for in my life you can imagine when people die i'm one of the first people they call first if i never raise a dead body in my life i told myself this many years ago that if i never raise a dead body in my life I will still pray for the sick if i never raise anybody on a wheelchair i will still pray if if i die of sickness myself god forbid but my last word before i take my last breath will be by his stripes i am healed i believe in the integrity of his truth greater than my feelings i never preach what i don't believe so i become the first guinea pig to my revelations does god heal look at me do you know the reason why we vacillate you have to gather together this this morning's meeting is to challenge you what exactly do you believe about god let me tell you the things i believe about him i believe he's a lifter i believe he's the savior i believe he delivers i believe he heals i believe he prospers I believe he is almighty greater than any charm greater than any devil greater than any it is because we don't have encounters listen you will match a charm you didn't have faith in the charm yet the charm still affected you you didn't believe in the charm yet the charm affected you because there's no encounter there is an encounter that you can have a viper stuck to the hand of Paul and they said ah you are dead he said no 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 don't worry that's all right there is something at work in me the life of God this is not just some Pentecostal drama the life of God listen to me I, I don't say this to promote lawlessness but I have prayed for more people with deadly communicable diseases in my life if i were faking this thing i would have died by now there are there are people with certain sicknesses and infirmities that there are disclaimers you shouldn't even come near them because it will affect you and destroy you i believe that god energizes people people ask me all the time apostle you are running from pillar to post you are doing this where do you get the energy from there are times in weeks I may not have slept a, 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 a reason for a reasonable period of time. It is not a license to be careless. It's good to rest. But there are times that the duty calls. A military man wants to sleep, but once he's in front in the battlefield, he has to endure. There is grace and strength that makes this happen. If anybody tells you, that divine health is not real think again what do you believe about god do you have an encounter or are you preaching it there are many preachers today who have written books and then they go back and say i hope what i wrote is sure i hope is the truth we have preached messages that we go back and say me too i don't understand what i preached though 
i only watched the internet and downloaded some messages and created a sermon out of it and while we are preaching demons and principalities and powers have no respect for those sermons because they don't come from a standpoint of encounters worship ministers who sing without encounters that's the reason why the songs don't bless people we hold the mic around hallelujah give jesus a praise alpha and omega lion of the tribe of judah rose of sharon and while we are saying it you know that there is a distance between what we are saying but there are people who will come and stand from a standpoint of encounters and one song they will raise whilst you are seated in the crowd there the last thing you will remember is that they started singing by the time they are done you will go home and for three weeks that song will not die in your spirit because it came from an encounter you may not remember all the parts of the song but one part will be etched in your spirit can i tell you this what i'm teaching now as powerful as it is in the next three weeks you may forget it but there is a spirit that comes out of this message if it came from an encounter that will remain with you you may not remember everything i'm saying now that is the truth but you will know that you were in an atmosphere of god's presence god's power god's glory and something happened to you in that presence the power of the flesh broken fear died an infirmity le left and it just went like that many of us have not taken our time to have genuine encounters with god john chapter 4 is god speaking to you this morning john chapter 4 let's start from verse 5 be patient with the reading and please follow carefully john chapter 5 chapter 4 the bible says then cometh he the he there being jesus please watch carefully to a city of samaria which is called sika near the parcel of ground that jacob gave unto his son joseph next verse the bible says now jacob's well was there jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus at the well and it was about the sixth hour are you following the story now the bible says there cometh a woman of samaria to draw water and jesus said unto her give me to drink we're discussing encounters for his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat next verse then saith the woman of samaria unto him how is it that thou being a jew ask drink of me which am a woman of samaria for the jews had no dealing with samaritans next verse jesus answered and said unto her if thou knewest the gift of god and who it is you see that jesus is saying i see that the reason why you are speaking like this is because you do not have a revelation of who is speaking to you if you had known who is it that said to thee give me to drink thou would not have asked him and he would have given you living water next verse the woman said unto him sir thou hast nothing to draw with and the well is deep from whence hast thou that living water then jesus responds or she said art thou greater than our father jacob which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle ah. jesus answered and said whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again but whosoever drinketh of the water that i shall give him shall never thirst but the water that i shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life 
this woman was surprised the woman said sir give me this water i'm tired of coming to this well all the time i'm tired it's burdensome if there is a way i can get this water and not have to come here again then i am ready for it verse 16 now she asked for water but jesus said to give you this water i need to help your situation go and call your husband and come so that i will give you the water together ah he got the woman and the woman made a very interesting statement she said i have no husband jesus said unto her thou hast well said i have no husband for thou hast five husbands look up five husbands and he whom thou now has is not even your husband in that you said that you are true your heart is sincere you are ready for an encounter with this living water next verse we're still on please media help us and the woman said to him sir i perceive for you to be this accurate in deciphering my life why did you straight forward go to the issue of husband i perceive that you are not an ordinary man who is just sitting by this well from an ordinary man he graduated to being a prophet i perceive that thou art a prophet now there is a question that has been burning in my heart from the issue of water to the issue of husband now we arrive at the issue of worship our fathers worshiped in this mountain and he say that in jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship jesus said unto her woman believe me the hour cometh and night when ye shall neither worship in this mountain or yet at jerusalem you shall worship the father 22 we're reading 26 then we'll jump there's something i want to show you ye worship ye know not what look up please look up please look up jesus is saying you are worshiping what you do not even understand it is not from a standpoint of encounter it's just religion just because you inherited a practice you continue to practice it it says but we worship we know what we worship for salvation is of the jews uh-huh but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such who are the such what does it mean to worship god in spirit and in truth from a standpoint of purity and a standpoint of encounter not just religiously doing it 24 god is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth the woman said unto him i know that messiah cometh which is called christ when he comes he will tell us all things hallelujah 26 and jesus said unto her i that speak unto thee let me break this parable i am he the hymn you have been looking for that makes you go to church the hymn you have been looking for that makes you cry and say i know there is a savior the hymn that makes you drink and smoke to get high i that you are looking for this well you have been coming to drink water from i that speak unto you i am he it starts with give me water but it ends with i am he it may start as your donkey missing but eventually to end up as i am he it may start as your result not being nice that's what led you to that conference that's what led you to this but eventually it will lead to the revelation i am he it may even start with sickness in your body that's what brought you to the conference it does not matter how we started the most important thing is that this is the end we come to church for various reasons we seek god for various reasons no matter what baits you into the faith life it is allowed 
provided that your experiences keep graduating till you get to a point where your final testimony will be that you have met the one who you seek i that speaks unto thee i am he keep that scripture there please there are those who began to seek god because they lost their parents and they did not know what to do so they got born again there are others because they are looking for miracles signs and wonders they came to god there are others because they are tired of idol worship the story of the samaritan woman reveals to us that it does not matter how the discussion starts the most important thing is keep graduating your hunger and passion until you get to a point where you hear him tell you that i that speaks to you i that drew you i am he but um jump to verse 28 look at what happened the bible says when he revealed to her when she had this encounter with jesus the son of the living god what was her immediate response the bible says she left her religion she left her ambition the water pot there was a sign of what gave her relevance the moment she had a genuine encounter with the god of the bible she left every other thing that had become her pursuit she left it and went her way into the city and say it to the men there my goodness my god jesus did not call her to ministry he only gave her an encounter when you have a genuine encounter with god the proof that you have met him is your life will never be the same your plans cannot remain the way it was no way that encounter will reorder your plan you can start as a banker till you have an encounter with him the banking may still continue but i assure you there will be a reordering of your life she left the water pot please give us that scripture and she went to the city and became a preacher instantly come this was her message i can't preach but i can draw you to a man who can help you i can heal you but i can draw you to a man he says come see a man not just come hear a man you'll be hearing about him but now come see him. there is a difference between hearing and seeing come see a man who told me all things that ever i did is this not the christ me too i'm not sure but while i'm still contemplating come I, I love you too much to leave you in that state that means when a church is not growing the real prayer is not just for church growth lord give encounters give the pastor and the members genuine encounters when that church has a visitation i assure you you become too emboldened to be quiet here was a woman who did not attend any workers training I'm not saying anything is wrong with that here was a woman who had never attended any crusade in her life but she had an encounter i that speak unto you i that sent you to ministry i am he i that can heal the sick i am he i that can lift you in any good state i am he when you meet him you will not be ashamed to meet men she was ashamed to meet men men were disappointing her but when she met this god of the bible she went back to the same men and said now come all of you let me show you a man verse 30 pay attention the bible says her testimony was so compelling they went out of the city and came to him please follow this follow this don't be distracted 31 let's continue please in the meanwhile the bible says okay let me just jump in quickly go to 39 for the sake of time go to verse 39 now watch this the samaritans of that city believed in him on him 
for the saying of the woman do you know what this means? which testified he told me all that i ever did leave this scripture there the people did not really have an encounter with jesus but they saw the woman who had an encounter with him it was enough for them to come to church so they came to meet jesus watch what happened verse 14 so when the samaritans were come to him they besought him that he should tarry with them and he abode with them two days hallelujah may you never forget this miracle and many more believed now not because of the woman because of his own word notice the graduation they came because of the woman they now had him teach and then verse 24 this was their testimony everybody read this is what an encounter does one two read please and said unto the woman now we believe not because of thy sayings for we have had him ourselves and know that this indeed is the christ the savior of the world i came to church because a tract was given to me i didn't come because i know the pastor or i know the god of that pastor i was simply invited you are welcome you come as you are but you don't remain as you are when they came and they had the god of the bible they now said this is not about you again madam in other words if that woman turned and now said do you know what i've changed my mind i don't believe in him again they will say thank you you go but our conviction right now is too strong it's not about you again hear me when people give flimsy excuses and say my pastor is not serious with god so i have a license to not be serious they are joking in as much as they should be worthy representations of the kingdom your assignment is to have an encounter with god that is greater than parents greater than background if i get up today god forbid as a man of god and i say i don't believe in jesus again i've left this christianity thing if you turn and follow me it's a sign you were never following jesus you should be so convinced that you say i love you i respect your opinion because can i tell you this prophetically i hate to say this but it's true as we approach the end times you are going to see the falling away of many people who were once strong in the faith standing for jesus christ many will tell you i am tired you see it happening in the west now after many years of serving jesus they say you know what i'm tired of this jesus thing i want to go and live my life encounters will give you the staying power to finish to the end take it high for me there's a hymn that just came to my mind oh jesus i have promised to serve thee till the end be thou forever near me my master and my friend i shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side no wonder from the pathway if thou will be this were the hymns we sang in the seminary when we sang these hymns i wish we had a revelation of what we were saying we were just singing it hungry and waiting for the service to finish so that we could go and eat during the length period it was like headache oh dear this fasting again and they raised that hymn and we murmur it with anger in our hearts such rich truth i have promised to serve you to the end we'll sing it one more time it's a commitment oh jesus i have promised to serve thee till the end 
be thou forever near me my master and my friend I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side no wonder from the pathway if thou will be my God. on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand hmm. to the end no falling by the wayside because it has come from an encounter an encounter that is greater than prosperity whether you heal me or not my love for you remains intact whether you lift me or not my love for you remains intact whether you lift me or not my love for you remains intact whether ministry expands or not as far as my loving you is concerned there is no bending please take it high for me how big he worshiping all of the days of my life how big he worship me all of the days of my life how big he serving you all of the days of my life how big he serving you all of the days of my life how big he loving you all of the days of my life how big he loving you all of the days of my life listen one thing i can tell you is i've made a commitment the encounter i have is greater than a sword is greater than a bullet is greater than money is greater than crowds you will never be able to serve the purposes of god in this end time until you have an encounter that is greater than anything you are the love of my life you are the hope that I cling to. You mean more than this world to me. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. Help them, please. I wouldn't trade you for riches on oh, oh, oh. You are you are my the fathers that carried the gospel some of them died revealing jesus even at the point of death they died smiling encounters our generation hardly has encounters little persecution and people chicken away from god god are you there little persecution If you want to serve God to the end, you need an encounter that is greater than preaching. An encounter that is greater than the Bible. 
an encounter that is greater than tea and bread we have all kinds of interesting christians in our generation today five months your prayer is not answered you will leave the church i need to look for a solution five months lord i give you three months as a worker if you don't bless me after three months i will go back and we threaten god with all kinds of things hear me when i started my journey with god and many men of god here will tell you bishop by the privilege of god's grace when i started with god coming from the northern background i didn't even know that there was anything called honorarium never in my life i didn't know there was such a thing as honorarium that you actually will preach and they can give you a basket with banana and fruit and say thank you thank you for what it was such an honor to represent him but today if god does not deliver us from the rubbish that is happening in ministry how much will you give me which hotel will you keep me ah. you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you for great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are can i tell you this those that brought the gospel that we receive today i've had the honor of being in a few places that are monuments today those that brought the gospel to the east many young people are not students of history they just keep moving and having ministry and they don't learn the things that happened before they came this is why we thank god for the privilege of fathers like our bishop and we pray that god will keep him long for our sake so that when we are misbehaving they will tell us that before you were born this is how we serve god oh we were not serving god for tea and bread if you don't pay me i will not play the keyboard for you <laughs> there is a place to honor people there is a level that ministry can rise to that you need to employ people but it's a joke the mentality that we use to do ministry today no encounters why didn't you come to church the tire of my car spoiled ah. why did you stop coming for the conference the people inviting me did not treat me well do you know i say this with every sense of responsibility there are many ministries today if you make an altar call now as the people are getting born again you see people running around they don't know what next to do there are no cards to follow them up it was not in their plan to save anybody they don't even they would just say you please just be the elder i'm not talking of a non-denominational conference they don't even know what to do nobody's in charge of following those who are saved no that's why most of our people who get born again don't have encounters they are saying salvation prayer somebody is chewing gum and pinching their friends and laughing and you clap for them you say they are born again they were not born again no no sir that was not born again i assure you see i am both old and new school thank god you heard what bishop said we have to be careful this some of these things we call modern christianity if we are not careful we will never see the authentic power of god it is all this carelessness that some of us respectfully speaking we ship some of these things from everywhere and say it does not matter I know you don't like this morning sermon but love it all love it all if it is power you want over territories Gideon said why are we not seeing this power again why are we not seeing it as our others have seen he said destroy these idols there are idols there are idols 
many men of god today don't even know what a retreat is you ask them what is a retreat they know what a convention is they know what a conference is but they don't know what a retreat is what is a retreat they think it's just fasting if it's not in your presence if it's not from your hand if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it for everything i need is in you it's in you in you for everything I need is in you when I started my journey with God it was not power I was looking for it was not fame I was looking for no no I can tell you till today till tomorrow he's my pursuit not pulpit not fame many of us writing books have distracted us from an encounter to look for him i need to write books so that when i sell it i will make some money and god is saying i'm looking for your attention man of god this is not how we started dear believer this is not how we started we need to organize programs the more you organize programs the more the members stay and god is saying who taught you that i am here and you ignore me and you are doing ministry But the people that do know their God. Hmm. The people that do know their God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh dear, oh yeah, he can't get. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.